Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the first Wednesday of the month, and it's also World Vegan Day. So happy World Vegan Day. And who better to have on World Vegan Day than Kathy Hester's Vegan Kitchen. Today, she's going to show us some easy recipes that are made from a can of tomatoes. This all started because I prefer not to eat salt for a variety of reasons. I was actually raised not eating salt because my father was in his 50s when I was born and already had his first heart attack. So I never really developed really a taste or a liking for it. But occasionally I'll eat it in condiments, you know, like ketchup and mustard and uh, barbecue sauce because I'm too lazy to make my own salsa. And when I do, I don't really feel that well because my fingers swell up and my wedding ring gets stuck. And I said to Kathy, do you have a good salsa? And she goes, yeah. So we're going to learn how to make a salsa, a ketchup, uh, a pasta sauce, all from a can of tomatoes. How easy is that? Please welcome Kathy Hester. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm with you. So how could I not be doing amazing? Right. Because I love you. You're like oh, my favorite. No. Well, right back at you. You got, I, I was telling you the other day, I don't know if you guys follow Kathy, but please do because she's delightful. She's funny. If you need to know how to use a piece of equipment or innovate a recipe, but I, I really think you and Cheryl should just have like a show, like a morning show where you guys just chat. You two, you don't need any guests. You two are hilarious and adorable together. <laughs> I will definitely say we are hilarious if we mean to or not. Uh, and we are supposed to be doing one a week, at least just the two of us. And if today goes well, I will plan and then I'll know what lives we're going to do. But we're Cheryl and I were just doing Tuesdays together. And we call it spilling the tea with Kathy and Cheryl, which is so cheesy. And we just kind of keep you guys updated. For those of you who don't know, we took the McDougal 12 day program in July and it was really awesome for us. And Cheryl was on board for the first time and it was kind of really a cool thing. And our health specialist, Stacy Cross, through that program comes on now two twice a month. And Chef AJ, I don't know if you ever find this, but like, even when talking to Stacy, like, I feel like I paid really good attention, but there are a couple things I would pull out of context. And I know at least with the Dr. McDougall program, one of the biggest myths is it's a 50-50 plate. Right. And so, yeah, I see the look on your face. Yeah. Well, that's the 50-50 plate, I think, is a visual for people that just I don't know. I mean, I, I because we we don't want people having to weigh and measure their food. So it's like a good visual. But the thing is, is if people want to be successful, most of their calories have to come from starch, in my opinion. That's why I don't understand how some raw fooders are successful because they don't eat any starch. How are they not hungry? But but well, yes, I think so bananas. I think bananas end up being a big part of their starch. Not that I could do it or that I'm saying you should be whatever or not. But like Stacy was saying. 50% is the minimum amount of starch you can eat, not the maximum. So when we see these 50-50 plates that are built like pottery plates, we think, oh, that's really easy. But uh, I had a viewer on my show who was saying after Stacy came on and told that, because Stacy says she runs and she does 70 to 80% starch, the rest mm -hmm. vegetables. And then a person that had lost like 120 pounds and had plateaued did what Stacy said and got off her plateau. Yeah. It's and the starch is the key to satiety and it's the key to be able to stick to the diet. I think when I was heavier and losing weight, I was probably eating more vegetables, but I don't even know if I'm getting my two pounds in anymore. It's like, for me, it's all about starch and I much prefer starch to fruit. I, I don't get, I like fruit, but it doesn't satiate me the way starch does. You know, that's a really good point. And I didn't think about that. So last night, because I was too tired to Halloween, even though I am like, Halloween is my favorite holiday. So we like roasted vegetables. And then I, I chopped up some pears and apples. We made this whole fall, fall harvest bowl. And I used um, apple cider vinegar and pears and made this great sauce. But and kind of that sauce does really lead you into these sauces because I roasted all these vegetables separately in different spices. So I don't want to play and do something hard 
So I threw a few things in the blender and magically I had something that was compliant for me that I can't buy at the store. Mm -hmm. So I did have a viewer talk to me and say, well, I want you to convince me why I should make all my sauces. It just seems like a lot of work. And I don't want to convince you because here's the thing. If your diet, just like what Chef A was, Jay was saying, she wants to have salsa. She can't find one without salt. So therefore, it makes sense for her to make a salsa. If you, if you can find a salsa that meets all your eating needs, maybe you don't have to unless you want to and it's fun for you. So I want to be real clear about that. Another good reason to do this is what the recipes we're doing today are there. They're pretty simple. The ketchup will seem more complicated because there's going to be a lot of ingredients because that's what makes ketchup magical. Um, but the first one we're going to do is this pasta sauce. And this is something I do at home all the time. And while a lot of times you can get salt-free and oil-free, well, at least oil-free, I don't know about salt-free, if the Trader Joe's pasta sauce is salt-free or not. It's not. But you know, I want to, I want to say something else too. I don't, even when I buy salsa, I don't care for the shelf stable ones. They do not taste good to me. You know, the ones in the cans, I buy the refrigerated kind. It's like $7.99 for just this small thing. It's expensive. You know? Absolutely. And see, that's the thing. So I'll show you here real quick too. So I went to the store because I don't usually eat salt free. So I just want to be real clear. So no one yells at me later about that. Um, <laughs> listen, don't, don't, doesn't matter. Cause they're going to yell at you either way. I, I am salt free. And I made a post <laughs> yesterday about my blood pressure and people like, were like, how dare I? It's so dangerous pushing SOS free. I don't push it. I don't care what anybody eats. Although I would prefer people to be vegan and that's it. I never right. tell anybody what to eat. No. And, and if, if you come to my groups or my lives and start telling people what to eat, I will tell you to stop because I have everyone from meat eaters who want a vegan recipe or like a vegetable recipe to people who are sofas free, right? And the thing is, is we all can share ideas and lift each other up and support each other. And that's what I'm all about. So if that's what you're about, you should hang out with me. But if you're about making everybody eat exactly the way you eat, we may not make really great friends, right? <laughs> and it's, I think it's funny, Chef AJ, because people think sometimes because you talk about your diet, that that somehow that matters to you that everyone's eating your diet and I am proof like for what I think it's been like 12 or 13 years ago is when we first met I was heavier I was using oil but leaving oil-free options in there and all that and you're just like you have the most reasonable response to people that I've heard from any other food professional which is and I'm going to, I'm going to mess it up now. Like it's what you say, eat as. Eat the least restrictive diet yes. that you can eat that will give you the results you seek. I don't think, you know, just it's don't beautiful. be unrealistic. Don't think you can just eat, you know, bonbons all day and be trim and healthy if, if that's your goal. And if it's not your goal, what I loved about you is you were always inclusive that even though you ate a certain way, you were able to figure out how other people, I mean, like most chef, I, I have trouble doing that. Like if somebody says, no, this, no, that you can always figure it out. Like you're a magician. A oh, that's a, well, the thing is, is, is it in my heart? If you had a gluten allergy or a nut allergy, or you eat sofas free because you feel like if you don't, you get tr your addictions get triggered. Of course, if you came to my house, I would cook that way for you. And that's just how I think. But it, it is very interesting because I think what I want to encourage every time I go live is let's be compassionate with ourselves and with the people around us as much as we can. And, and don't get me wrong. I kvetch. Chef AJ knows I kvetch, right? <laughs> it's not about pretending you're happy all the time, but sometimes it's about drawing those boundaries and this person can do their thing, but I'm going to spend my energy keeping on track. So now that that sermon is over for the day, <laughs> Chef AJ didn't know that was coming. So I went and I um, went to Harris Teeter, which is also Kroger. And I think there's a whole bunch of them. So they're pretty much throughout the whole country. They have Simple Truth Organic brand and they had a lot of no salt. They had no salt crushed tomatoes. Um I got not the organic no salt diced tomatoes in tomato juice. 
And one thing we're going to use a little later that I was super excited to find with no salt, it may be old news to you guys, is Rotel. Wow, it, Rotel has no salt, huh? Yes. And it, not all of them, but it's going to have to have this label on it to be salt free. Because when we started talking about this, one of the ingredients I use is diced green chilies. Now, I didn't go out and I thought they didn't have salt in them, but I got those just in case. They do. And so um, the green chilies is what's really going to help with the sauce. But I was just surprised as I looked around. And Chef AJ is the one who told me, because I was like, ooh, am I going to be able to find tomato paste? It was really easy at Harris Teeter. And even though... The Costco ones do not say no salt on the label or the packaging. They don't have salt. And Chef AJ told me about these because I realized after I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll make ketchup. I'm like, what if I can't find no salt tomato paste? But it's even easier. So I'm going to go ahead. You know, Kathy, people can always add salt. This is what I don't understand. You know, if you have a salt-free bean or tomato, if you want salt, why can't people just add it? What's so hard about that? Well, I think if we're talking about the manufacturing process of all this, salt and sugar do act as preservatives. Now, I want to be real clear. That is not me telling you that you should put salt and sugar in all your food. I'm saying why manufacturers often like in beans or vegetables or green chilies have salt or something like that, because usually it's a cheap preservative that the public isn't scared of. It doesn't have a weird name. It doesn't do any of these other things. Um, that's also why when you make your own non-dairy milk, it's going to go bad a little faster, especially oat milk. Oat milk really only lasts about three to four days without all the stuff in it for bad or for good. But yeah, I agree. So like even now, I'll put a bare minimum of salt. Like, so every person I know that eats a normal diet, even a normal whole food plant-based diet, grabs the salt shaker at my table. So I put a little bit in, and the, but most everything is on the side. The reason I do that even is I'm showing some people how to put salt in their food. But if you don't want to have salt in your house, you don't have to. You really don't. And um, I have a salt substitute that I make that's really simple, and it's just one tablespoon garlic powder, one tablespoon onion powder, one teaspoon ground celery seed mixed together. I call that my plain salt substitute because it doesn't add any other flavorings in there, but it hits those salt things. And I, I had it up here, the, cell, the one you talk about from... Um, oh, the salacious? Uh, I had it up here. We'll find it as I go like, along. I like that one a lot. And, you know, I'm always like when, when people write or like they'll put a, a you know a comment on YouTube. Well, I'm in Australia. I'm in this country. I can't get these. I always say check out Kathy Hester because you have a bunch of salt free seasoning blends that you make like barbecue and just really yummy ones. Absolutely. And if anybody's like, oh, I want that barbecue recipe, go to healthyslowcooking.com or plantbasedinstantpot.com. Scroll down a little bit, sign up for my mailing list and you'll get a printable thing. I think I do Italian seasoning, which I'm not even doing today. We're just putting in the single herbs. It, making your own spice blends just makes it a little easier. So like yesterday when I was roasting those, I took some blends and put on the cauliflower. I took a blend. I put it on the acorn squash. So I just didn't have to think so hard. Sometimes you need to save what little noggin you got left for the day. <laughs> okay, enough talk. Let's make one thing because I bet you anything in the comments, almost always when I talk too much, they're like, is she ever going to cook? I promise. <laughs> and we're not cooking. We're actually not cooking anything. We're just mixing some stuff together. That's what's even cool about it. No oven required. Right. Okay, so we're going to do the pasta sauce. I'm probably going to do it a little fancified. But so you see how I have this can open? This is what I do at home. And then if you have an Italian seasoning that you like, maybe from local spicery or Kroger or wherever, you can just put some of that in, put some of your salt substitute in. I usually add a little bit of balsamic. Typically pasta sauces have a little bit of sweet something or something done so they taste sweet, the balsamic will take care of that. 
you could, I only have a little bottle of California balsamic um, Italian vinegar, but you could just multitask, put some of that in. That would be beautiful. Um, in addition, I've got some thyme, some oregano, some marjoram. And if you don't use marjoram much, let's talk about it just real quick. So see, it's, it looks you know, so, I, I, Kathy, I don't use marjoram. I don't have marjoram. So should I get it though? Cause I I've always wondered about it. Cause it always seems to be in ketchup. It is in ketchup. And it's so one thing I like to do when I've taught in-person classes is I, I open up that's time. I'm showing you something. I, I open up regular oregano that could be Italian or Greek. I use them interchangeably marjoram and Mexican oregano smell all three and you'll note Mexican oregano has a little more citrus to it. It really livens up like our not fried beans, things like that. It really adds this extra special touch. And I feel like marjoram uh, is kind of like Mexican oregano on steroids. So it has a little bit of that kind of citrusy barely, but it also has this open floral. So I feel like it just pulls in another layer of flavor and I use it a lot in soups and stews. And um, I like people to try it if they can. And one thing that you can do if you're like, okay, spice lady, I don't want to try all your crazy things and spend $8,000. Don't find a place that has bulk spices by a tablespoon, try it, hate it, never get it again. Love it. Fill up that bag. Next time. Yeah. Or Kathy, some stores, you know, you, that you can try it in the store. Like for example, a, a savory spice or a local spicery, you know, just a little bit on your hand. Uh, Cause that's what I do before I try before I buy. That's a great idea too. Um, back in the day when I was young, all we had was the co-op spice thing. So that's what I used to do. Cause I used to play in the orchestra for a living. So I made no money. So okay. that's also why I always have, try to have the cheaper option. You know, <laughs> if there, if you can't, can't do this one, you can do that one. But what, did so you play? What, what instrument did you play? I never taught, a French horn. That's what my I degree thought so. Was. I knew that, but I didn't know if the audience knew that. That's such, a, that's such a nice instrument. I think so. I think the people that do it are a little nutty. Like me. So, <laughs> did you know uh, that I played the trumpet growing up? No, I started on the trumpet. I could see that. You've got and that you, swag. You know, when I went to school, so um, I moved to California in 1971 when I was 11. And so I wanted to be in band. And the two, my favorite instruments were, I loved the saxophone and I, I loved the trumpet and I loved the drums. And I wasn't allowed to play them because those were boy oh, instruments. Instrument. So all I could, and that, that, gosh, I wish I could have like fought it then because I didn't want to play it. So my choice is as a girl, I could play the French horn, but not the trombone or the trumpet. Cause see, those were boy instruments like the tuba. So I could play the French horn, the piccolo, the flute, or the clarinet, because those were girl instruments. Just like I wasn't allowed to take wood shop or auto shop or plastics. I had to take home ec. And man, I think how upset I was back then. So I played the clarinet and it always gave me a rash here, you know, like, cause yeah. it, and, and so finally, when I got to be in ninth grade, the law changed. And by the way, we didn't have to wear dresses anymore. I hated that law. Like, how could they force you to wear? I hate wearing dresses. And so anyway, um, so then I switched to the trumpet. And so, and I actually did the, the solo at ninth grade graduation. So yeah, but that's my trumpet oh, story. That's awesome. Yeah, it's so interesting how things have changed. And I'm so grateful for the people who came before me that made things easier. So just case there's some people older than me. I know I'm pretty old, so who knows <laughs> what'll happen. All right. So you and the rest will will do a little bit more. So one thing that I do like to do is I have mushroom powder. If you hate mushrooms and you don't like them, don't use this. <laughs> but mushroom powder doesn't taste like I don't love mushrooms, but I can handle mushroom powder. It gives that umami flavor. It's, it gives a lot of umami. It's a darker, deeper level flavor that can really help balance out something. So like tomatoes 
at this point, they're kind of mid-level, mid-high is the way I think of it. So, and my friends who hate mushrooms do just fine with mushroom powder. And someone out there is going, mushroom powder is very expensive. Here's how I get free mushroom powder. And when I go and I get my mushrooms, I get a big thing of mushrooms. I take out the stems and I set them aside. I cut them in quarters and I put them in the Breville and dehydrate them and put them in my spice grinder. So I pay zero dollars and I use the caps for other things. So I'm going to put in about a teaspoon and I'm keeping notes because I'm making this special for you. This is what I do in some classes too, to show you how we can make it and then how we can tweak it. Because once you have that skill, you can make a lot of your own things just the way you like them. Not the way I like them, not the way Chef AJ likes them, but maybe you're like, I want to put a little bit of this in there, you know, feel yourself a little bit. I'm going to put in about two teaspoons of basil And you can see, I'll show you this up here too. This is just some basil I grew in my yard and I crumbled up and dried it. So again, this isn't super expensive or anything. I know I like basil. Now, sometimes you can get crushed tomatoes with basil and then you wouldn't need to do that. So we'll do two teaspoons of basil. I'm going to do a teaspoon of oregano. And so we're starting this as a base. I know that this can take a good amount of stuff. Now, you could be a grown up, whereas I am not, and you could put this in a bowl. (laughs) Usually when I'm making this, I'm like, I just need a sauce. Somebody please just get out of my way. And another thing I love is ground rosemary. And this may be a Kathy thing. So you can take the regular prickly rosemary and put in your spice grinder. I don't like the way they poke me in the mouth. And that is why I use ground. So I'm gonna use about an eighth of a teaspoon. It's quite strong once it's ground. Okay, let's go ahead and put like a half a teaspoon of thyme. That's just my preference. That's not usually, I think, in Italian seasoning. And then onion and garlic powder, the heroes of my kitchen. It's a way of doing this just real simple. And here's the thing. Once you figure out what you like with this, you can make up some packets. I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of onion powder and a teaspoon. And this is granulated garlic, even though it says garlic powder. That's just coarse ground. It doesn't mean anything, you know crazy. And I'm writing that down so I can tell you. And I'm going to go ahead, if you can tolerate nutritional yeast, it'll give your sauce a cheesy flavor, right? So I'm going to put about a tablespoon in. And then we're going to see if Kathy can carefully mix this up without making a mess. My vote is probably no, but I just mix it real careful. And this is exactly how I make my sauce when I'm making it for me at home because I'm doing it because Cheryl is boiling some chickpea pasta or I'm roasting some butternut squash noodles or eggplant noodles or who knows what I've spiralized if I was in the mood. And you can buy spiralized veggies now if you have more money than time, right? And if you have more time than money, then you can make a lot of things from scratch. And I think the only thing I else I would add in here would be some black pepper. And I would tell you to do it to taste. Cheryl doesn't like, ooh, I don't have a lot in here. This is gonna be exciting. So I'm probably gonna use just like an eighth of a teaspoon. I will use some cracked pepper on top of my, my pasta dish. And here's another thing. If you live alone and you're like, Kathy, that's a lot. (laughs) That's four meals for me, right? And um, what you could do is you could freeze it in ice cube trays and then just heat it up. You could heat it up to put it on your potato and make yourself like an Italian potato, maybe some sauteed mushrooms, some roasted eggplant, 
this and then I would sprinkle a little of my oat parmesan which is just toasted oats nutritional yeast and in the original recipe I think it says salt or salt substitute but if it says salt for some reason you totally could use the the salt substitute I'm going to taste this then I'm going to decide if I need more garlic or onion powder from my salt substitute but like, seriously, you're just putting some stuff in a can. That really is all there is. Oh, and I can tell I forgot to put my balsamic in there. And this is why I like to use it. So those tomatoes can be almost a little bitter, right? And that's why traditionally, like, the Italian ladies would put some sugar in with them. And this is just the, the Reserve 25 Star. So it's kind of a thick, almost like it's aged, but I don't think it's aged. So I'm probably gonna... I think it is. Kathy, look at the label. 18 years, I believe. Or 25 years. Say oh, that. It says 24, 25 star rating. Oh, I, I know. I'll okay. show you guys the label. Because like I thought it was aged 25 years too. Isn't that oh. crazy? Well, I still like it. It was at, even before California balsamic. That was my go-to vinegar because it was so good. It's it's really tasty and it's very thick. And so like when I'm mixing now, it's it's going to be a lot easier for me to mix this in. And I would just do it to taste. I think I probably, I'll say one to two teaspoons balsamic or to taste. And by taste, you saw me taste that, right? So if I'm doing something or developing a recipe to taste, I'm going to, if I added a little more basil, I'm going to taste it. If I added a little more um, garlic, I'm going to taste it. I'm going to keep tasting it over and over again. That's why I have a jar of taster spoons. And that's all to taste means. It doesn't mean I'm fancier than you and I can taste things. It just means I'm taking the time to really make sure this gets just right. Now, it's a lot easier for me to put in that kind of effort because I'm going to write down the recipe and somebody else is going to try it. But if you start doing this as you're, maybe you make this recipe, maybe because uh, Chef AJ is going to put up a link where you can um, sign up to get the recipes tomorrow for this. Um, I sure. Yes. Oh, that's it. That's it. And so, as you taste little by little, what people see of as my magic is literally, I'm just paying attention. I'm just paying attention. It's just like all our experts in computer stuff. And sometimes even me with the Ninja Creamy, you know what that comes from? Reading the instructions and trying it, right? But it's really nice to have somebody go before you and get that base outline. And if you tasted this and you thought, I wanted this a little bit less tangy. I'm going to add another teaspoon of this. I really love garlic. And actually back there, I'll put some of this in if I can. This is one of my spice drawers. <laughs> I don't know where if I have my, there we go. Penzi's has this great roasted garlic powder. I don't know if you've ever tried that. Well, I love Penzi's. When I was at True North, I went there because it's walking distance. And Kathy, have you ever taught in-person cooking classes? I have. I am kind of lazy and I I like do I like seeing the people. I don't like putting everything in the car and cleaning up afterwards. I was just saying, because when you talked about tasting, you know, we always have like a bunch of tasting spoons. And when somebody double dips, the whole class just like freaks out, you know? Oh, I have little jar, little bowls of everything. Like when I just did um, a milk, uh, milk maker demo that's on the YouTube channel where I made a whole bunch of recipes for our plant pod. And I sh like all like oregano, marjoram and Mexican oregano. I would have sent that around the class in a dish for everybody to smell. I do. I miss that part. But like, even then I just, it took a month to get all that stuff cleaned up and put away. <laughs> so, and you could add roasted garlic, you could add roasted garlic puree. 
You can add all kinds of things. This could be the base for, oh, you know what this would be good with? But I did, mm -hmm. I made some cooked giant white beans, like those giant limas. I think it's cor Coronado beans from Rancho Gordo. This would have been good on those. But that's it. And you know what? It took so long because I was telling you all the stuff. It takes less than five minutes to make this. It freezes. It'll store in the fridge because they're it'll store in the fridge at least five days. So if you're not sure you're going to use it, I would go ahead and kind of put that away. So that wasn't hard. And now you have all this information. Anybody think it's hard? Anybody have any questions about that uh, so far? You know, I do have a question, though, uh, that was sent in by a viewer named Victoria. And I feel terrible because I was supposed to ask you last month, and I apologize, Victoria. So I want to make sure I ask it this month. And she says that many recipes use an Instant Pot, air fryer, or high-powered blender, which I cannot invest in in this time. Mm -hmm. I do have a small slow cooker. What did you do before you had this equipment in order to create simple plant strong dishes quickly? Thank you for any suggestions you have. Oh, absolutely. A slow cooker is great. If you're a one person, a one and a half to two quart or even a three quart slow cooker is perfect. Um, again, I was very poor and <laughs> I was in the orchestra and in the summers for two summers, I was on food stamps because we made no money over the summer. So I understand that and I know with me being kind of you know the appliance wizard it seems counterintuitive but one thing you can do if you don't already have a slow cooker go to the thrift store you will find one and start from there also I found ninja blenders I've seen instant pots I've seen ice cream makers I've seen food processors all kinds of things like that at thrift stores. Now, I, it, your mileage may vary depending on where you are. And if I, we have a lot of thrift stores, and sometimes if you can go into the wealthier areas, those thrift stores will be more expensive, but it's still cheaper than if you got something on discount. So, if you have a slow cooker, you have a good knife. Um, I did have a food processor my parents gave me when I was 18 that lasted till I was like 36 years old. Um, and I've seen that same food processor at the thrift store. So it, but if you don't mind doing things with your knife, um, cause you can make, you can make just about anything if you've got a stove and you oven and an instant pot or a slow cooker. I like slow cookers and instant pots because that's something you can effectively do to make things easier and have time that's hands off. So I'm assuming that your life is busy, right? I'm assuming that you don't have time to do all the things. When I'm working at home, a lot of times I will put my dinner in the slow cooker. So when I come up and I'm like, hey, what happened? How is it five o'clock now? There's food ready for me. And that food can be literally, you could chop up some potatoes, put in a can of beans. You can, um, I use onion powder and garlic powder instead of sauteing onion and garlic to go in there. Um, put your favorite flavor profiles in there, different things like that. So you can do it with a slow cooker. And if you go to healthyslowcooking.com, it has slow cooker recipes and more. So it also has Instant Pot and Air Fryer, but there are some slow cooker recipes for two that might fit in yours. And if you have a, a question about a specific recipe you're trying to make, you can email me at kathyhester at gmail.com and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. I am behind from traveling, but no, my slow cooker got me through graduate school, being a musician, and all of these other things. So the one thing people complain about when they slow cook food is that it, they'll tell me it all tastes the same. And the reason it tastes the same is they treat their slow cooker food differently than they do. If you're making a, a super stew, you taste it, right? As you're going along, you taste it. Hmm, oh, I might need a little more salt or pepper or balsamic or spinach or whatever. 
people put things in the slow cooker in the morning. They come home, they're like, ta-da! <laughs> no, no. You have to taste it. And you have to adjust it. Because my basil today may be fresher than my basil was the last time I made this recipe. So maybe I won't need to add it. But maybe I left it on the slow cooker for four extra hours. So now I need to add a bunch of these herbs that maybe the flavors cooked out. Adding a, a little splash of garlic powder, adding some fresh grated ginger to like um, like a, a, an Asian dish or a Thai dish can take it from, well, I'm glad I have dinner to, oh my gosh, this is so delicious. So that's my, that's my spiel and I'm sticking with it. You know, Kathy, there's, I, I don't know the names of these stores, but every city I've lived in have these stores where like, uh, like here they might be called falling prices, but like where stuff falls off a truck or stuff gets returned to Amazon. Oh, those are it's great. Like, that's a little ding. I'm not kidding. I have seen like brand new Instant Pots at these stores in the box with a ding and it's like $15, you know? So, and I've seen air fryers, I've seen everything or people sell them on eBay or garage sales because they don't, and they're like in, in mint condition. So if you are desiring these things, there are ways to get them a lot less expensively. Absolutely. And, and I've gotten so many things at a thrift store, you would not even I got an attachment for my Vitamix with the smaller container. I got that at the thrift store. Now it's not that you're going to waltz in there and they're going to have magically everything you want, you're probably going to have to keep coming back and looking and making a habit of it if you're looking to build up your kitchen. But you can get things there that I can't afford that I can't just go out and buy brand new. Uh, another place, and I talk about this a lot, depending, so like to me, thrift store is like, I am seriously at a budget. If you've got a little bit of wiggle room, then if you go to Amazon on your desktop, there's a drop down. <laughs> the cat wants <laughs> some attention. No, um, there's a drop down. It says like books or groceries or whatever. It says Amazon warehouse. And I got my Breville food processor half price. Mm -hmm. So, and it was supposed to be, it was in good condition and it was, there were supposed to be visible scratches inside the thing that holds the blade. There's a tiny little scratch that I would have never noticed if I wasn't looking that hard to find a scratch. Cheryl just got something that um, for, for our tech side of the business, and I forget, it was supposed to be just acceptable. It was, everything was still in the wrapping in the box. Like it had never been opened before. So anyhow, that's another thing to go. Because I know people think it's going to be gross, but I don't think it is. All right. So we're going to make probably two salsas. Trying to decide how we're going to do this. We're going to do a first one. It's going to be easier. Also, I just thought I'd mention, I'm going to use some fresh cilantro. Some of you don't like it. You don't have to use it. And if you're like me and you love it, but then it kind of goes a little wonky fast, right? Take it right before it's really bad and dry it. You can crumble it up. See how some, some has the stems on now. Some is crumbled up. I've even ground it. And so that way, if I didn't have time to go to the store yesterday, I still have that flavor. Also, when we you can do this with parsley, any any um, kind of green leafy herb, and you can just throw some into your stew, throw some into your not fried beans, and that's delightful. And it'll kind of reconstitute. Um, I'm trying to decide what we're gonna do here. So there's one way that I would do it that would be super easy. And let me get back over here. So these are just do we have the, I don't think I have the petite one. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> if I'm not going to cut it up, I like the petite ones, the petite diced tomatoes. And we're going to use the sauce. Uh, well, it's in tomato juice. It's, yeah, it's just tomatoes and tomato juice. So I've got this can I have to open with a can opener. And this is what I would do if it was like, 
ooh, we have leftovers in the fridge. So maybe we have some refried beans or some pinto beans that I made, some rice. Maybe I go ahead and saute up some zucchini and yellow squash and some cumin, coriander, a little chili powder. So we're talking pretty basic meal. And then I go, oh, I don't have any salsa. This is what I would do. So, and you could drain it if you want it not as juicy, but I'm looking for the juicy life. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in some of these. If you can find green chilies without salt by themselves, and see, I'm making this for Cheryl. You know, those I have not, though. There are a few things like the chilies, um, the jalapenos in the can, the, you know, the chipotles. I, those I have not been able to ever find without salt. Well, and one thing we can do, too, though, the green chilies, I have some hatch chili powder, but I have, like, some um, different chili powders. So we could add jalapeno powder to this. Are you are you sensing my I feel I bowls? I love jalapeno powder. You know, they sell it in big, big jars at Costco and they sell it in small jars at local spicery. Yeah. And I've got some here. I think this savory spice, but I also, this is probably my own. And when you make this, you have to be careful when you take, <laughs> here it comes, because I always have a big gong. I, it, sometimes it makes, it makes you sneeze or cough sometimes. I'm not even that near it. Look, like for real. So it opens and it kind of puts some stuff out there. I'm going to go ahead and put a quarter teaspoon. You probably could put a half teaspoon, but I live with Cheryl. I'm going to put a half teaspoon in. Cheryl told me last night something I put smoked paprika in was too spicy. Really? I, I don't find that spicy at all. <laughs> this is the story of my salsa making life. I am not going to put um, any onion in this because Cheryl will pick it out. We're going to put onion in our other one that we're going to um, make small enough that Cheryl won't pick out. Okay. So, and we're not done, but honestly, this is already pretty good. It's smelling pretty yummy. And having those green chilies in there is really going to help. It's going to help both our salsas. And so this one, I probably won't actually put up since we're just emptying <laughs> jars into a bowl. <laughs> but um, I'm going to go ahead and use garlic powder just to make it easier for me right now. And so that could be as much or as little. I'm going to put a little onion powder. If you go ahead and dice some onion. Ooh, that's, that's a chunk of onion powder. Okay, let me see if I can smash these so I can mix it up real good. And that just gives it some depth of flavor. You can, there was a Mexican place I used to go to in Louisiana that had salsa of the day. And one time they had a mushroom champagne salsa. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting, and it led me to think a little bit outside the box. Now, we've got some limes. Lime is going to be necessity. And with a sauce like this, let me make sure I'm getting the small one. This is Kathy, have you ever tasted the hatch chili peppers like they sell them at Trader Joe's? Yes, and I have... Um, I've gotten some canned. I've gotten some dried. I actually used some of the dry in a recipe I did not that long ago. They're delicious. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of zest in there. And by a little bit, I probably mean, we'll see, maybe half a, half a lime. And that's just going to give us a little more oomph with our citrus. And I find that when we're dealing with canned products, sometimes it's a little bit more dull and that's gonna really liven it up. Yeah. And it's gonna really help you smell it more than just the juice, I think. And so you could keep going if you wanted to. Or, and when we're doing 
citrus. I don't, I'm sure you do this already. Hit it. If you have a bad day, take it out now. Hit it and roll with your body weight. <laughs> Hit it. Why are yeah, limes? It, why are limes so stingy? Oh, they can be, huh? I need to sharpen this knife. Um, sometimes I find the older they are, the more juice they give, which doesn't make any sense to me at all. But I'm gonna go ahead and let's see if we can get. We'll probably get about two tablespoons, maybe a tablespoon per half. And you can adjust this to what you like. <laughs> can you guys hear the kitty or no? I can't. Okay. He's politely asking to go outside. Let's try it with this much first. I'm going to mix it up real good. And Chef AJ, what other ingredients were in the salsa you like? Because I am going to make one that's more like okay. jarred salsa too. I'm going to go grab it. Okay. So just talk, talk to everybody. So I'm going to go to cool. the fridge and show you the one Charles prefers. I'll be right back. Absolutely. And I just kind of wanted us to end up with a chunky one and a not chunky one. Mm. So what I taste right now is the spice from the green chilies and the jalapeno, kind of in the middle. You get a little bit of high notes from the lime. And I think we can do the rest of this lime. I might add a wee bit more garlic powder. And this is how I want you to make it. You could also, this could be a fresh salsa where you've diced your tomatoes, diced the onion. Um, and all that too. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little more lime because I'm feeling it. And we'll see. And if I messed up right here by adding more lime, I would add more tomatoes. And you'll just, this is also something you can freeze. And that would be if it was tomatoes out of your garden or canned tomatoes. Okay, I have. Oh, let me. Do you want to want me to show you my salsas now? Yeah, that's why when people say, "Oh, you're so perfect," well, no, I'm not. I eat tostadas like three times a week, and I use one of these on each one. So the one that Charles loves the most, and this is refrigerated salsa, Casa Sanchez. It says mild, but it really is more medium. Okay, where do they have the? Where the heck are the ingredients on it? Okay, let's put my glasses on, but. <laughs> okay, ingredients. Here we go. Tomatoes, good. Onions, good. Water, good. Cilantro, good. It says peppers. It doesn't say what kind. Salt is, you know, much lower down. Garlic and citric acid. And it is two tablespoons. The sodium is 160 milligrams. And, and the thing is, is I, I eat like half of this. So it, I'm getting quite a bit. Now there's two other salsas and maybe one day you can teach me how to make these that I get at Sprouts that I love. And one is a Pasilla salsa, it's brown and one- Oh, I totally, I use that one. And yes, you can make it. You can it's delicious. And they taught me at Rancho, but it never came out this way. And one is a tomatilla and jalapeno. And let me tell you what those ingredients are. And you know, like and I, the sodium, it's, it's not that the sodium is horrible, 125 milligrams per two tablespoons on this one, 210 for this one. It's just that I want to be able to eat the whole jar. And so this one has fire roasted tomatilla, onion, jalapeno, pepper, garlic, cornstarch, salt, cilantro, xanthan gum, lime juice powder, lime juice, maltodextrin, lime oil, citric acid. And then the other one has fire roasted tomatilla, water, pasilla peppers, my favorite, fire roasted tomato, fire roasted jalapeno, onion, garlic, sea salt, citric acid, and xanthan gun. So, you know, they're not horrible, but um, I want to be able yeah, to put some people on. can Well, you can get away with having some. Some people maybe who have a heart disease or heart problem don't. And that, oh, oh, oh my God, or kidney right? problems. I mean, I know a guy that, I mean, yeah, for some people, like they cannot have any. And so it would be nice if they could have something delicious. And that's exactly why I do what I do. It's not that I need it sometimes, but I do. And I do have a tomatillo salsa. I think I have two tomatillo sauces. One's on plantbasedinstantpot.com that you make in the Instant Pot. The other one, which uses about the same ingredients, are, is made in the air fryer, but you could totally make it in the oven, people who don't have an air fryer. 
Um, and it's on my YouTube channel too. I have a short of making it in the air fryer. Um, the pastillas are hard for me to get, but there is at Campari Foods, I can often get it. But I love those and some of the other darker chilies. There's another one and I forget the name of it. Is it Cascabella? It's kind There's of dark. Ancho. What about Ancho? Oh, that's my favorite. And I make um I make a lot of stuff with that, like a rojo sauce. And so you can take um and the pasilla would be really a lot like this too. Grab um something to wipe my hands on is that what you do is you take that dried chili. This could be a hatch chili too. You take the top off with the stem, open it up, take all the seeds and ribs out. I now use cooking shears and just cut it in strips, pour hot water over it. I just put it on the kettle. Drain that water off, save it. You could use that as part of your blending salsa. So maybe two ancho peppers I would put in with some water. You could use... Oh, there's so many different things we could use, but that make that the base, add some lime juice, add some cilantro if you want. Um, sometimes people will add almonds to make some of the things like a mole. I've successfully done it with rolled oats. So I've, I've been able to take the nuts out of the process, but if you did something like that, like, so let's say you got the pasilla all done, and then look at those ingredients and layer those ingredients. And I would cook the garlic. If you could roast the garlic and the onions, and if you have a jalapeno, if that's in there, that would really up level it because all that smoky flavor will come in. Okay. So I was chopping up probably a quarter cup cilantro. I could use a whole bunch of cilantro. And I want you to notice that I reserved the stems right now when we blend stuff up i'm going to blend these stems because they have just as much flavor as the leaves but they're not as pleasant to eat a bite of so that's why we're going to do this a little bit differently and look how pretty it is too so i would say if you are one of the um super taster cilantro hater people Go ahead and maybe even, um, if you can get your hands on some episode, you could put a little episode chopped up in there, or you could use a little parsley just to make it pretty. But you know what? If this is because you don't have salsa and you're ready to eat, then don't worry about it. It's your salsa. It can be as pretty or as not pretty as you want it to be. And I support you on that 100,000 percent. But to me, this looks a lot like what you get like at a Mexican restaurant here. I mean, I'm not in California, so our mileage may differ a little bit, but we do have, um, we have more, probably more South American population where I live and luckily a big Indian population. So great Indian stores and restaurants. There's even a, a sitar which is in Durham, North Carolina, where I live, is doing an all vegan dinner buffet every other Thursday night. They're working on trying to get some oil-free dishes in there, but I'm pretty happy that they're just, let's see, let me let you see. Right? Let's see if we can see it a little better from here. Not really, but sort of. And so- That looks, that looks delicious. Right? It's not insignificant. I made it really too spicy for Cheryl. <laughs> well, you know, it's spicy you, for me. You could dilute it maybe for her, but it's delicious though, right? Oh, it's good. And what's weird to me, even saying it, but like when you, when you make these salsas from cans you would think it doesn't have a fresh tomato taste but it kind of does and there you go okay I think we're probably going to use we'll move on to the next salsa and then if I run out of time for ketchup I'll just have it in the recipes anyhow well, I don't know what we've been chattier than usual usually I try to stay on track 
but it's so fun. I know I'm having the best time. So uh, my favorite thing to have in my um, pantry is crushed tomatoes because I feel like they can be the least effort. That's what we made the pasta sauce with. So then you can just open a can and go. And I think we're gonna. I'm gonna. Be, I'm trying a new blender. I have a friend who was talking this blender up and I'm like, okay, let's do it. What's it called? It's called the beast. That's a funny it's, name. It's got a really powerful motor. It's tiny. And at Costco, I just got it. And actually I love Costco. I bought it for $150, which was $50 cheaper than I had seen it. Went on sale two days later, $30 off. You know what they did yesterday? Handed me $30 in cash at the customer service. Whoa. I know, right? And so that's where I always buy my Vitamixes and things like that, too. I think we can fit all this stuff in here. And, um, but people have really been loving. I'm going to leave that out for right now. Why am I doing this? Because I am known to fill things too much. We're going to do half. We're going to do as if this was one. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to take some of these cilantro stems because we're going to puree everything together. So I'm probably going to put about a quarter cup. And then we can always make a second salsa. And watch in three minutes, I'll be like, I'm going to add all of it. Because that's what I do. <laughs> okay, so 14.5 crushed. We did about a quarter cup cilantro. You can always add more cilantro in here. Let's also go ahead. We could add real garlic or we could add powdered garlic. Let's see if in one works well, I'll show you another tool I use too that I actually found at the thrift store. I didn't know it existed. And it's a garlic crusher. Have you seen those, Chef AJ? Garlic crusher. Diff, show me. Okay. So since this is a big clove, it's going to like it better if it's not quite this big. So yeah, another way to take out your frustrations of the day. So you literally... Just rock back and forth. Have you ever seen those one that, that look like like they're like a little dish with like bumps on it and supposedly you can use it for garlic and ginger? Uh, oh, I do have one of those. I have a ceramic one. And honestly, some of the ceramic bumps come off. Really? It makes me worry that I've eaten some of them. So I'm sure it's something I've done. <laughs> So we did like, I'm going to call that two cloves of normal garlic. We've got another lime. So we'll go ahead. Who am I messing around with? <laughs> All right. So we're going to put similar ingredients in. This would also be a great place to put in that reconstituted guajillo, ancho, pasilla pepper to really add that special touch and kind of do your own salsa blend. I'm just going to do half a lime. And let's go ahead and do a piece of onion. So I'm going to say it's probably a quarter cup onion. This is one of the um, kind of Vidalia style onions. Get some of that off in there. And since I don't know this blender, it has a really powerful motor, like almost as powerful as the, the Vitamix. I'm feeling pretty good about putting all this stuff in. All right, so what am I missing? I still want to either add some onion and garlic powder to get that salt 
like substitute thing, or this is just my salt substitute, which is just the two of those with a little bit of celery seed that's ground. So I'm going to go ahead and put. And you know, there's a difference between celery seed and celery salt. People need to know they're two different spices. It Yes. So it's kind of like, let's see, seasoned salt, right? Seasoned salt is salt with other things. And basically, it, if it says onion salt, garlic salt, celery salt, that's celery with salt for sure. Okay. And what else? Did I leave something out? Did From what you told me you had in there, it was garlic, onion, cilantro, lime. Oh, let's add some chili. Let's add some rotel in there too. Let's get the green chilies in there. That's what. See, I knew there would be a reason why I should leave that out. Because I want to get these green chilies in here with no salt. And the reason I'm putting onion in this and I didn't in the other is if you have a picky eater that will pick onions out, this works. Cheryl doesn't dislike the taste of onions. She dislikes the texture. All righty. And I did kind of I blended up water before we came on to make sure I knew how to turn it on. There's a little button in the back if you get one. And it comes with three sizes. And I like that. They're all kind of smaller sizes than like your big Vitamix pitcher. And they have lids. So you can just close it up and put your sauces in, in your fridge. And okay. There we go. Okay, got that pushed. You hold it down one second and then it'll just blend on its own or you can just keep pushing it and it'll, see. And I want this to be pretty blended up. I think it did a great job. <laughs> Let's find, oh my gosh. It did a great, great job. And it wasn't very loud. That's kind of crazy. All right, I'm going to taste it. And what we can do from here is we could add some other chunky ingredients or not. So, oh, it's really good. I think. Oh, you know what it is? The spicy is the, the green chilies in here are really spicy. They're not usually. Mm. Um, so sure, okay, I have any of these anyhow. <laughs> but probably what I'd like to do is maybe put a little bit of cilantro, more cilantro in there. And see if we can get some more green flax going. And I think we could use the other half of this lime. I'm feeling good about these are pretty small limes. And I'm gonna add just a little more of my salt substitute. I think it could just have some more places on my tongue that it touches. That's why I'm making that choice. do you ever use lime powder kathy have you heard of it i do and i have lime powder grapefruit powder lemon powder and orange powder and orange powder i found out has sugar in it do you use this um Oh, do we have them over here? There's a like, it's called like just lime or something like that, right? Or real lime. Yeah, I've seen it at store, at, at restaurants, like little packets of it. It's so interesting. I thought I had one here. I was going to show you, but maybe I have to put it in the kitchen. And I just gave one to a friend. So I'm like, I don't know where I moved it. I'm just going to see if I can just pulse this a little bit just to get a little more color in it. 
because I think the other one looked a little more inviting. You could also, if you don't want to blend a second time, you could just chop it up really finely and, and use it as a garnish too. Oh, you can see from up here too. <laughs> Get it full to the brim. And see, that just looks, to me, looks a little bit more inviting. But I think that's pretty good. I need to wash this off. And do we have time to do the ketchup still? You betcha. I'm not leaving till I see my ketchup. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let me. Uh... Mm. And to me, though, these really do taste like store-bought sauces, they don't feel like you're eating canned tomatoes. And that's the one, ooh. I'm also noticing the blades on this beast. So it has like the four blades in normal blenders, but look, there's a couple, two underneath here. Maybe that's part of its secret to success. Okay, let me get some of this out of the way. And then we will be ketchup makers. And ketchup, is easy to make, but there is a lot of ingredients and measure. But it's not something that you're going to be just measuring like every week. You're going to make ketchup and you're going to be pretty much done. You know, I'm me... guessing if you know how to make ketchup, you know how to make barbecue sauce. Oh, yeah. I got you on the barbecue sauce. And I have a few in my books for sure. Okay. And see... Even I have to go back and look at my ketchup recipe because there's too many things to remember. And there are a couple things we may do differently. So, okay. And I think we'll see how this is going. So I soaked some dates in water. I didn't really need to. These were medjool dates. If you have, is it Deglet Noir? Is that how you say it? I think it's Deglet Noir. Deglet Noir. I don't think it's noir like film noir. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm kind of like an old country girl when it starts talking about the fancy words. Um, I'm going to put about half these in with the water. I soaked them in. It's about 10 I soaked in some water. We may not need them all. So let's start there. And yes, my kitchen is always a mess when I cook. Same here. <laughs> That's how you know you're not paying attention to anything but the food, I think. All right. So we're going to do a can of no salt diced tomatoes. Right, that's going to be the first thing we're going to add in here. And I'm not going to have enough room in here. So we're going to swap blenders back to the Ninja. You know what? I'm going to just get the kitchen or the Vitamix over. Let me push that out. Y'all, I'm five one and a half, and my counter is three feet wide. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes when Cheryl's not here to push the things towards me, I kind of have to go off book. Getting that over here. Because the last thing I want for you to do is watch me switch something again. All right, let me get that plugged in. <laughs> Can you guys see me? I'm on my tippy toes. Yeah, the people that build houses, are, I mean, I, I have some cabinets here. I can't even reach them. So what's the point? Right? Mm -hmm. I have a little step stool too. 
So it's for real. Okay. I'm just not going to worry about it. And this way we can now more comfortably put all the things in. I'm going to put a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. And yeah, apple cider vinegar is just apple cider vinegar and water. I think that's okay, isn't it, Chef AJ? Or is Absolutely. there something? Okay. Why would, what would be wrong about with any vinegar, really? That's what I thought. But I thought I'd make sure because I did not. Because even wine vinegar, I know Dr. Greger has said it's okay. And I, I send him this mustard he loves. There's this salt-free Dijon and it has wine. He says it just gets burned off, you know? It's true. Well, and it's kind of interesting because I've been making some sauerkraut. And so some fermentations don't really work without salt. Yeah, there, there is a way to do it. And I used to do it, but it was so labor intensive. And I, I think I might even have it on my YouTube, but you know, you used celery juice, juiced celery. Oh, that's a great idea. Yep. And I should try that. This, I just made my first batch of sauerkraut this year. Okay, so this is, again, the no salt added tomato paste and we're going to add in the whole six ounce yep the whole six ounce thing and tomato paste is just really cooked down tomatoes and that's why the flavor is so rich and yummy and if if where you are for some reason, you couldn't find salt-free tomato paste. What I would do, or you want to make it right now, if you have tomato powder, because I actually, I know you love cherry tomatoes, Chef AJ, but I hate the way they squirt in my mouth. So <laughs> it's, and I don't have many texture eating sort of things, but that's one of them. So I, when I get them in a CSA or something, I cut them in half, dehydrate them, and um, pulse them in my spice grinder. And then I use them for things like if I'm making a soup or if I heated up that spaghetti sauce that we just made, it's like, oh, I wish it was a little darker. You could add a little tomato paste, you could add a little tomato powder, and that would really make it all sing so much better. Okay, so we're gonna do, a I like mine smoky. So I'm going to do a teaspoon of smoked paprika. If you hate smoky things, just use regular paprika. But Again, I love smoky things. Oh, you can even go crazy and add even more liquid smoke or smoked paprika too. We're going to do a teaspoon of garlic powder. Like I said, I've got granulated. We're going to do three quarters of a teaspoon of onion powder. And if when you try this, you're like, well, that's not enough. Then this is yours. This is your masterpiece. Make the base and then add whatever you think will make it shine. We are going to. Add da, da, da. I do have liquid smoke in this recipe, but I'm not going to put it in. We're going to do a quarter teaspoon of allspice. And you'll see with ketchup and some other weird things, you may see some strange ingredients like in like Heinz 57 or A1 sauce or Coca-Cola, which I know we don't drink, but I made a like a whole food, I guess whole food plant-based. I used bitters. I used cocktail bitters in there too, but I used balsamic vinegars. I used a fig an elderflower. Oh my and God, that's brilliant. I used to love bitters when I was a kid because um, it made me feel like I was drinking alcohol, even though I've never drank alcohol, because it was something my mom said I could get at the bar, bitters and soda. And uh, it also, it's good for settling stomachs. Yes. And I'm running over here because I'm so excited. I'm in this um, thing. I want to show you some non-alcoholic bitters for anyone who maybe who doesn't imbibe because a lot of them do have alcohol. I gifted myself this mocktail box um, that I love. And this, 
this was so such a great thing and it's awesome in sparkling water holiday pie bitters and so it has like sweet potato apple pumpkin all those like fall spices and coca-cola cola in general has used to have a spice blend so i put this in with some fig balsamic a little bit of elderflower balsamic and i think i put a little bit of cinnamon in there just in a lime sparkling water and then if you wanted to you could <laughs> add a little bit of date paste or something if you wanted to make it sweeter but it was such a fun experiment to do, but that's why we're putting allspice because that usually people kind of push back going, that's weird. But remember, ketchup didn't come from this country either. We just kind of just took it over. <laughs> it was, um, and then we're going to do like one eighth of a teaspoon of dry mustard powder. If you don't have dry mustard powder, you can use yellow mustard if that's what you have. And then we'll put a little bit of black pepper in there. And I think I'm putting like an eighth of a teaspoon. So I'm and allergic to black pepper. Will it still taste good without it? Totally leave it out. To totally leave it out. I think the only time you have to put black pepper in anything is like when you say it's a black pepper pasta sauce. And then you <laughs> just go, this is Chef AJ's pasta sauce. <laughs> And I'm going to put a little bit of my salt substitute in there, which again is super cheap. You can even go to like the dollar store and get garlic and onion powder and um, celery seed powder. Kathy, Justine would like to know how long the ketchup will last in the fridge because she doesn't go through it quickly these days. And how long will everything you made last in the fridge? And can it be frozen? Everything can be frozen. And so I would say, first off, if you're worried about that, I would go ahead and freeze it in ice cube trays, especially the ketchup. An ice, a normal ice cube tray is two tablespoons, which is about one serving of ketchup. So then all you'd have to do is you could put it in the microwave, you could thaw a few out the day before or thaw out how much you think you'll need for the week. That's what I would do. The apple cider vinegar in this one will help it last longer. So I think it would last up to two weeks. Everything should be in the fridge if you're keeping it in the fridge. We only have lime juice preserving the salsas. And with the pasta sauce, we have a little bit of balsamic vinegar in there. I don't think that that's really gonna preserve it. So I would use it or use it up in five days or freeze the rest. Freeze, freeze it by no later than the seventh day, I think would work. And then I had another, I had another um, ketchup recipe and I added some cloves and some dry ginger. So I have that on the side. We'll mix this up first and then see if we wanna put that in. But I've had smoky ketchup, spicy ketchup. You could put jalapenos in here. You could put, honestly, you could have put some of the Rotel and make a flavored ketchup. So I'm going to taste it. What I'm tasting for is I'm going to taste, do we need more sweetener? which we, pro we probably will. I'm gonna also taste, does it seem like it needs something else? And is that something else? I think I had ginger cloves and we ended up adding some ground celery seed with my salt substitute, but we could add a little more. There's Sounds a like question. Let me just answer, please, from uh, Sandra. What is the brand of salt-free Dijon mustard? It's called Primo's, and I put a link in the chat. And if you're in the Sacramento area, he's going to be at the Harvest Festival with Thomas from California Balsamic, and I'll be there on Friday, November 17th. You know what? That's pretty good. I think it's sweet enough. I almost want it to be a little more... No, I think this is pretty good the way it is. Let me see. One thing I'll do if I'm trying to decide if I'm going to put something in, smell the two together. Yeah. I want some ginger in there. Let's see about this. 
There's a question if you can use allspice instead of cloves. Well, we added allspice in there. So you, and cloves are purely optional. So I think I'm going to not put the cloves. I had one recipe that I used it and one recipe that I didn't. And the recipe I used it in, I actually cooked it down in the slow cooker more. So it didn't have the same amount of, of clove. But allspice is what I would prefer. I think I'm going to put about an eighth of a teaspoon of ground ginger in here. I think that'll give it a little bit of oomph. Okay. And we'll blend that up. And then we'll taste and probably be done. Make sure you let it really blend up enough. Because in a sauce like this, if you get a big bite of ginger or a big bite of allspice, it's going to be unpleasant. And we want this to be a really pleasant experience. So a few years ago, I actually um, gave up sugar for a while. And so I made this ketchup and when we would go out, I would just bring my own ketchup with me. Same way as we all now bring our balsamics or our homemade, I make a homemade ranch dressing that I like a lot too. Mm. Yep. And so sometimes I think of things as in, in these layers we've talked about, right? And so while the apple cider kind of gives you a brighter flavor so does the ginger and the two together just it, that was just a little nudge it needed to be perfect for me so one thing I've done before too is you could if you are already buying ketchup or you have ketchup bottles that you're pouring it down the drain or something like that clean the bottle fill it about no more than two-thirds of the way full smaller bottles. You could do this with small bottles you got at the dollar store or something too. And then freeze those. And then you could just thaw out that whole little bottle and your ketchup's ready to go. And you could throw it in your cooler when you're traveling. But that's, that's my ketchup. You are one clever gal. I always told you, you, you never thought about going into like production for your spices or anything, huh? I do sometimes. And then I realize how far behind I am on the things I'm doing now. I would love to do it. And if someone wants to be an investor or producer, you can contact me. <laughs> but I think I, I already do so much with, with lives and classes and eBooks. And I'm just a little hesitant to start maybe I've, I've talked to some people about maybe starting with one or two. So if I did one or two spice blends, if you guys tell me what you would want to have, and people have talked to me too about maybe doing a Kickstarter to do something. So it's possible next I year. I wish when these companies went in business like Whole Harvest, they would have contacted you to make their seasoning blends. Because the one they're using is using green salt, which is fine if people eat salt, but it's still salt and Goldhammer, you know, wouldn't accept those. And I just wish they, you know, I, maybe I can hook you guys up. Maybe that, you know, please, you know, send me a text and remind me, you know. Yeah, because I'm not opposed to, to, to helping other people do it. That I know it gets really expensive and this is the thing. And one thing for everybody to remember when you're buying, you know, somebody's products, be it the local spicery, well, your world, any of those things, there's a reason that they cost more is because it costs a lot to get the materials. It costs a lot to get it made. It costs a lot to ship it. So that's why I would love for you guys to make some of your own things. But if you just refuse at some point, I might have to. All I just right. hate to call, to charge so much for something you could make for so much less money. But, but you don't understand. Nobody wants to make stuff. That's why we have processed food and fast food and buy it. So me, I would like, this is what I would love. I would like the ranch mix, a salt-free one that I could just add 
some almond milk or something too, like easy. Did I send you that? Because I made one. Yeah, that, that, I would love that. I mean, ranch, barbecue. Those are probably my two favorites, ranch, barbecues. What about just some salsa stuff that I can just put in the can of tomatoes? Because I am that lazy, honestly. I I really am. Let me see from you guys in the chat. What would you want if you if she was only going to make two? Um, the, the, no, Justine, the recipe is you have to click the bit.ly link. I had posted it in the chat in the show notes and then she'll send them out to you. And you guys, you're going to, it's probably going to be tomorrow before you get the recipes. Cause I got to write all these down. I tweaked everything live and I'm in a meeting. So yep. just know that I'm not neglecting you. It is right. on my, it is the top priority on my list. Right. Uh, Deborah says, where's the Harvest Festival? I don't know the exact location, but it's in Sacramento. It's wonderful. Ooh, and, what's that? Um, yeah, if you can come up, Kathy, uh, there's a question. Can you use lemon or lime instead of apple cider vinegar? I would think so. It is not going to have the same staying power as far as pre- it, the apple cider vinegar is going to preserve it. And you're going to have to use quite a bit to get. So like a quarter cup of, I would try at least Start with an eighth of a t- eighth of a cup citrus juice. You're probably going to use a quarter cup, and you may even have to go up a little bit more. And right. you're not going to get that one. That something about apple cider vinegar when you're trying to produce like um like a processed food flavor is perfect. So like this makes this taste like store bought ketchup. It also makes Carrot dogs taste like carrots, uh, taste like hot dogs. They don't taste like carrots. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> okay, so um, I, Karen's saying, because you said, well, who wants to buy it when they can make it? And Karen's saying, well, I don't have the ability to do this anymore because of my stroke. So there are people yeah. who buy it. And there's a question, what spice grinder do you use from Cheryl? What I use is I I have a little Ninja um, blender because I always, because everybody's at different, and it sticks to the counter really well. This little guy, and I think it's like, it's called like Smart Torque or, and it has a smoothie cup that has a little turner, but I have in here, behind a whole bunch of stuff evidently I thought that was a good idea this little spice grinder attachment and I really love it because basically you're getting the power of a blender behind your spice grinder it's not very expensive if you already have a ninja blender I would not buy a ninja blender just to have this spice grinder a coffee grinder will work just fine And in fact, you can get a coffee grinder at the thrift store, get some really cheap white rice, like whatever the cheapest rice you can find, grind it through it. It'll start absorbing the coffee flavor and aroma, and then you can start doing spices. If you do something like a really strong spice, like maybe chili powder, you could follow that with some rice as well. Nice. Uh, so people are saying, you know, uh, Lisa's saying a chili blend. People want a seasoning blend, kind of like, remember Lowry seasoning? And I have that. Don't I have that one in Gluten-Free Cooking in Your Instant Pot or whichever book that one was, my second Instant Pot book. Remember, because you were making it for a while. I made a salt-free blend. Yeah, and I used to use it. But, you know, I just, I don't know, the long, older I get, the more I just can eat plain food. I'm not trying to, like, be any. Oh, I just, I just love the taste of food. What can I tell you? But I do love salsa. And once I get that recipe, I'm going to make it. And there's nothing wrong with either way. And people, some people like some things and some people like other things. And that's why we have choices in the world. And that's the way it should be. I just like things to be fast and easy. So uh, this is, uh, this is going to be great. Thank you, Kathy. Now let's see, you won't be coming back until after Thanksgiving. So tell us what you're going to do for your Thanksgiving. We're going to rest and we're going to be at home in our house, probably in our pajamas. I mean, what are you going to make? This is your first Thanksgiving as a McDougaler. Well, and I I usually make whole food plant-based no oil Thanksgivings. Um, So, you know, what am I going to make? I haven't really decided, but I probably, I have 
on YouTube, I have a one hour Thanksgiving. It's like a sheet pan Thanksgiving where you get like three different vegetables flavored differently. I do use tofu and I probably will use tofu then, or I will go ahead and roast some butternut squash steaks. Have you ever done that, Chef AJ? No, but it sounds delicious. And I've never even made cauliflower steaks. And let me see. Oh, yeah. Because I broke down a, a butternut squash to use in something. So this one had a really long neck. So use the bottom part to cut up. And then you have, I peeled it all. And I have all these can be used as burgers or steaks. We can put like a really nice like sage rosemary sauce on top of that. There will be mashed potatoes and gravy. And I make a whole bunch of different kinds of gravy. And usually I thicken them with um, rolled oats, but you could use something else. You could use a vegetable like potato or cauliflower puree. I don't think we'll do stuffing. I always have to have something cranberry. So I'll probably make a cranberry sauce or I will make my new turkey loaf, turkey loaf, whatever you want. It's really tofu loaf with mushrooms that I made for Canadian Thanksgiving class. And I made a cranberry ketchup to go on top of it. And Ooh, I made ketchup sounds good. You know what I'm making? I don't know what I'm making, but you know what I'm going to try? My friend Sharon McRae said it was delicious. Drina Burton has a recipe for an autumn loaf and uh, I'm actually going to make it right after here. But I thought instead of making it in a loaf, which then I got to cut is muffins in a muffin pan that I can make a bunch reheat and I'm going to try it today. And if it's delicious, um, I found it on their website, autumn loaf. Drina tends to have really delicious recipes. I wish if you're watching, come on the show. She's wonderful. And that's what I'm going to try. And then, of course, you can mash potatoes, mash sweet potatoes, cranberry sauce, you know, all that kind of stuff. Have you ever seen where people take these like meatloaf cupcakes and then they frost them frost with them. The mashed yes. potatoes? I, I did that one year. Oh, my God. I did that. I made the I made it into a, a celebration cake and I made like three layers. And the frosting was uh, the, the inside frosting was sweet, but mashed sweet potatoes. The outside frosting was white. And then we piped it and then we put the cranberry sauce on top and it looked like like a like a cake. It was I just don't know if I can do that. And, and it's just yes, it's delicious. It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of effort. And I just I just don't like making effort. Okay. <laughs> Kathy, this is great. So next month it'll be December. So you can do any kind of holiday stuff. You could do Christmas, you could do Hanukkah, you could do Kwanzaa, or you could just keep doing great recipes. We don't care. We just love having you. If anybody has suggestions, let me know. And I will certainly take that in consideration in my cooking in Kathy's cooking club. Every year we do a gift class where we make gifts in the kitchen. Is that something? So it can be spice blends. Sometimes I make chili powder, salsas. I've, but you can also do things like make, um, made an oatmeal scrub for body scrub and things great like idea that. For, I'll, I'll, that's a great idea for a show. I'd love to, I love that. I, that I, <laughs> I want that way everybody can give them to Karen Gaylor who doesn't want to make it herself. So no, exactly. <laughs> Hi, Karen, nice to see you again. All right. Well, Kathy, it's always fun spending time with you. It was a pleasure. And thanks guys for hanging in there with me. And I just want to give you all the encouragement. And I totally understand that some people have physical limitations to where you can't make the things, even the things we made today. Um, and know that I, whenever there's alternatives, I do try to keep that in mind as much as possible. But for those of you who are able to at least open up a can, you can kind of open up a couple of cans and measure out a few things and end up with these great products that would cost eight or $10 and you only spent $3 and five minutes. Thank you, Kathy. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 10 a.m. tomorrow for a brand new guest, Dr. Brooke Broussard. We're going to talk about her new book, which is called 